Right, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, the one who died on the cross, conquered death, hell, and the grave, conquered lust, sin, and death, conquered the devil, the flesh, and the world. We thank you for Jesus who rose from the dead, ascended up on high to be at your right hand. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost, the same spirit that raised him from the dead, that dwells in us, with us, on us, in us, among us. And, Lord, I just pray that you give me what to say. I don't want to speak my words. I want to speak your words. I pray that you just anoint me, give me what you have me to say for whoever will be viewing or listening in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really... I really don't have a special word, but I'm just going to preach what's, what's on my heart. You know what I'm saying? Whatever whatever God give me. But I'm going to tell you, the first scripture I got, <laughs> it's out of Revelations. It's one of my, it's also one of my favorite scriptures. You know what I'm saying? God had just dropped this in my spirit, really. You know what I'm saying? Revelation 22, 11. Because this is the time we in. He say, when it's almost to the end, you know what I'm saying? Whoever whoever got something, just hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you got from the Lord, just hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be a point in time when you can't get nobody else saved. You're just going to have to hold on to what you got. You know what I'm saying? Because people talk about revival and all that. That's, that, that's, that's cool. You know, it sounds good, <laughs> but the word talk about it falling away. You know what I'm saying? The, the the grip of the world is stronger than ever on people. And 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 then what I be thinking about, I, I don't know if uh I don't I don't know if I'm discouraged like as far as other people getting saved, but but then again, I I, I believe the I believe the Lord be using us. His people, I believe God uses us in ways that we don't even have knowledge of. You know what I'm saying? But then on some on some points, it's like, man, I can't really. Oh yeah, let, let, let me fix this this time, man. Give me just give me just a moment. All right, <laughs> yeah, I had to get that, had to get that right, man. But yeah, I'll be, um, I'll be thinking about it, man. I'll be like, man, it, it, it take a lot for somebody to get saved. The only way for somebody to get saved nowadays is they got to have a real encounter with God because the grip of the world is so strong. You know what I'm saying? The grip of the world is so strong on people and people are so stuck in their ways. And then from the time that the kids are growing up, the world is steady reaching for them, trying to pull them in. You know what I'm saying? And then people be so set in their own ways. And then we're, there, there's nobody really, it's not, it's, holiness is such a rare thing. The only real way of salvation is, is such a small voice. It's not really being preached. The church is watered down. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the gospel now, it's not a gospel of give up your life and take on the life of Christ. It's a gospel of whatever it is you got going on, it's all good. You just add Jesus to it, which is not real salvation. That's another gospel. That's another Jesus that's being preached, and that's in the church. But we, 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 we're in a time now where... Where people can just make up their own way, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Turn from your sin. You don't have to repent. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and and then it's it's so much. I guess you like like politically correctness. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, and then you know, when you preach against sin, 
they 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 want to uh, make it li- li- like you're hating. And, and, and see, it was once it was once upon a time when 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 you was racist, like didn't nobody care. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, like being racist ain't cool. Like even for white people. Like if a white person is racist, like other white people were like, like you know what I'm saying? Like that that's just the <laughs> that's the world that we in now. You know what I'm saying? That that's good. You know what I'm saying? As far as the racism thing, and then also the way you treat people, no matter what a person's uh what that is race, ethnicity, uh sexual preference, all that kind of stuff. Everybody deserves to be treated. Re- you know what I'm saying? With respect. You know what I'm saying? But um, the way stuff is now, people don't call sin, sin. And even in the church, you know, but in the world, it's like everybody make up their own way. The only way somebody can really get saved is if you is if is if you have a real encounter with God. I mean, it, it only makes sense because that's how I got saved. You know what I'm saying? But even before I had a real encounter with God. I believed in God. I knew what, you know what I'm saying? I knew right from wrong. But it's, it seemed like it's a different spirit in the world. You know what I'm saying? It just, I don't know. It's, it's uh, I don't know the, 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 the spirit of the world. It's not that it's this sin or that sin. It's just that you, you can't really, you can't be saved. When you still, when your heart is still in the world, you know what I'm saying? When when you get saved, I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about people who talk in God. Because it's a whole lot of people want to have something to say about God. And somebody might even know something about the Bible. You know what I'm saying? And everybody want to try to say something about God. But I'm talking about really living for God. That That's one reason, that's one way that God really uses me. Is, you know, people want to be halfway and I'm the one to squash that. I'm the one God brought me up on the scene to let people know, now nah, you can't be halfway. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't going to make a total commitment to God, you might as well not even mess with God. There ain't no point in trying to have him in your mouth, but he ain't in your heart. And then talking that mess about God knows my heart and all that kind of stuff, ain't none of that going to fly. You know what I'm saying? Because God does know your heart. But your lifestyle and your actions is going to line up with your heart after a while if your heart is really with God. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that, that, that's one thing God did with me. You know what I'm saying? You, I'll, let, I'll let you talk in God and you was in Christian activities, but then you living in sin, that's not going to go because your, your actions speak louder than your word. Your lifestyle... You know what I'm saying? And then I don't I don't believe that, you know what I'm saying, you got to love everybody. You know what I'm saying? Some people, you know what I'm saying, in the church, you got to know that. I don't care what nobody say. You got to look at the word. I ain't talking about what your favorite preacher say. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at the word. Jesus loved everybody. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, when it comes to being saved, you got to come out of your sin. I don't care what it is. Some people just greedy for money. You know what I'm saying? I work at a sales job. Some people will tell somebody anything, mislead somebody, you know what I'm saying, get over on somebody just to make that quick dollar. It's not worth it. (laughs) I'm talking about real holiness. I'm talking about real holiness, you know what I'm saying, where you really treat others the way you would want to be treated. If you was in that person's shoes, how would you want that person to do you? I'm talking about all sin, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) But, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of... It's a, it's a lot of stuff out there. I'm talking about fornication. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about really being saved. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who don't believe in God or you just like, man, forget God. I'm not thinking about God right now. Hey, well, do you. But if, but if somebody who trying to be saved, you believe in God, you believe that Jesus is real, or, 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 or maybe your faith is being stirred up right now, I'm going to tell you he real. You know what I'm saying? But check this out. If even the ones who don't believe, he going to be real to them one day. He going to be real to them one day, but it's going to be too late. He going to be real to every doubter, every mocker, every scoffer, 
every uh uh some of these people so intellectual, you know what I'm saying? But but they can only deal with the physical realm. They they don't have no spiritual senses. They don't have no revelation. All they know is you know what I'm saying? The physical realm. What can be proven through scientific theory and all that kind of mess. It's more to life than that. Look at death. When somebody died, that same body, the same physical body is there, but the life. See, you, you can't see life. You can't see what was in that person that represented their life. When you go to a funeral, you just see a body. But the life is gone, but the same body. See, it's something deeper than the physical. That's what I'm trying to say. It's something deeper than the physical, man. You, you have to, you have to, if, if you can't grasp that, I don't know what to say. And some people don't, they choose not to believe. It's a willful ignorance. It's a willful, it's a willful ignorance. Because and a lot of people don't want to believe in God because if he is real, what that mean for you? It's easy to live my own life and tell myself there is no God. But then if I believe that there is a God, then what that mean? That mean I got to handle my business with him. That means I need to submit myself to him. See, we living in a day and age, people don't want to submit themselves to nobody much less not to God. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the, 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 the world that we're living in right now is something, it's something serious, man. And then even if you believe in God, that's no good if you ain't living for him. I'm, I'm talking about a total commitment. I'm talking about a life of holiness. It ain't something that you perfect overnight, but you, you know what I'm saying, you, you jump in this thing with your whole life. It's just like jumping in the pool. You jump in that pool. You jump in Christ. You can't have your foot dipping in the water. That ain't salvation. Ain't like that. You can't have your. You know how 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 sometimes when in the summer, you don't want to jump in the pool. You just put your feet in. It, it ain't like that with Christ. You got to make a total commitment. You got to jump in the pool. You know what I'm saying? You got to jump in that thing with your whole life and you commit to being more and more and more like Christ. Perfection don't come overnight, but it's growth. It's a life of growth and development. It's called progressive sanctification. You become more and more like Christ. You know what I'm saying? You, you grow in more and more into the nature and character of Christ. And the things that's not of God, you shedding it off more and more and more. Somebody said, putting on more and more of Christ, taking off more and more of the world, more and more of sin, more and more of the sin nature. You shedding it. As time go on, you shedding it. You're perfecting holiness as you grow in God. And that's when God really forgives you. That's when God really helps you. But if you ain't really trying, if you ain't really, if you hadn't, if you won't really make a total commitment of your life to God, then you playing with God. And you think you playing with God, but you playing with yourself because, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to games, it takes two people. You know what I'm saying? You can't play games with somebody who ain't going to play. You know what I'm saying? You think you playing with God, but you really playing with yourself. It just so happens that God is gracious. It just so happens that he a merciful God. He don't take pleasure in sending somebody to hell. And another thing, God was showing me this a while back. Did you know God don't kill people for, for living in sin? When people be living in sin, God ain't the one that be killing them. The devil is the one that be killing them. You know what I'm saying? The, the way God look, but, but, but this is how it go though. If you die, if you die and you living in sin, you in trouble. <laughs> it's real. It's real in the field. God don't kill people for living in sin. Because if that was the case, I wouldn't have made it. It wouldn't be a whole, <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be a whole lot of people living now. If God killed people for living in sin, it would not be a whole lot of people alive right now. God does not kill people for... He can. Don't, don't play with them. I'm not saying to play with them. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's really not God's nature. He don't kill people for living in sin. But if you die while you living in sin, you in trouble. Hell, fire, brimstone, all that. Eternal damnation, condemnation, torment, all that. If you die in your sins, you in trouble. But God ain't the one that kill people. It's the devil that's out to kill, steal, and destroy. You know what I'm saying? The devil, his sentence and judgment is already passed. So the way the devil look at it, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to take whoever I can take with me. You know what I'm saying? He, he just like, I'm going to take whoever I can take with me. Yeah, that's why he uses deception. He uses the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And people that's caught up in that world, they caught up in their own way. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and people don't, they don't want to submit to God. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to submit to God. And, and, and really, I'm not really focused on any type of sin, like specific sin. But it's just a lack of commitment to God. When you don't have that commitment to God, some sin is going to operate in your life. It, it could be greed. It could be lust. It could be sexual immorality. Uh, it could be homosexual sin, homosexuality. It could be heterosexual sin, fornication, adultery, all that kind of stuff. Just an impure heart. Just the way you treat people. Just your attitude towards people. Not, it's not an attitude of love. It's a selfish heart. A selfish spirit. A self-centered attitude. That, that's, that's just as bad a sin as anything else. The first commandment is love God with all your heart. Second commandment is to love your neighbors you love yourself. But God can deliver you from any sin. You got to call on them. You, you can't try to make your sin be right in the sight of God. And I'm going to get on something. You know what I'm saying? But... You can't make your sin be right. You can't justify it. You can't justify your sin in the sight of God. And then, you know what I'm saying, something that's been on my mind, I, 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 got, I got to go there. I got to go there. It's, it's about homosexuality. Now, you know, people talk about whether people can be born gay and all that. Me personally... I think people can be 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 born gay. Because people say, well, God don't no, nah, I know God don't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But check it out. This, this, this is just my opinion. And in the end, it don't matter anyway. It don't matter what, what kind of sin you was born in. God can God can bring you out. Because see, people don't want to preach against homosexuality. You just have to do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I don't, me personally, I don't believe in bashing nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because the same God that died, the same God died for us all. You know what I'm saying? And without God, we was all in sin. But but I'm, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to teach. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, when they, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's something, you're going to see it. You're going to see it in the world. It's, it's an epidemic. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's an epidemic. Homosexuality, it's an epidemic because I think partly because the church does not address it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they have so-called false, false love, if you ask me. They have so much love, they don't want to address it. They don't want to talk about it. Then you got some people, they'll, they'll preach about it, but it's not really in a respectful way. It's really like in a like in a condemning way, like they really not like they really trying to run them out, rather than really trying to get them saved. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm on I'm on I'm gonna give it to you the way I feel like the like God gave it to me. I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? But but check this out. If somebody can be born with a mental defect, or a baby can be born physically handicapped with a physical defect. I think homosexuality, 
I think somebody could be born with a sexual defect. That, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. So if a homosexual say, I was born like this, how you going to try to tell them they lying? How you going to try to say, you lying, you what? Like, come on now. Like, if they say they was born like that, then from the time they can remember, they was probably like that. And then I, I know you can be born with a, with a mental defect. You can be born with a physical defect. You can be born with a speech defect. My personal opinion, I believe homosexuality is a sexual defect. Now, I know some people you can be straight and then turn gay. You know what I'm saying? If you allow, you know what I'm saying? Now, that's that, That's obviously the work of a, of, a, of a demon. But see, see, one thing you don't know about is there's homosexuals who done got saved. It's homosexuals in the holiness church who done been delivered. From that lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? But check this out, you know what I'm saying? Somebody got to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? It might as well be me, you know what I'm saying? But check this out, sometimes it's a demonic spirit. Watch this, just like lust. You know what I'm saying? Lust can be in your nature. If you allow yourself to lust, it can just be your sin nature. But it can also be a spirit of lust. So lust can be a spirit of lust that's on you or that's in you. Or it may not be a demon spirit. It could just be your flesh just lusting. You know what I'm saying? So I think the same thing about homosexuality. I believe that, 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 that somebody could be born gay or, or gay from ever, you know, from the from the time they was a little child. You know what I'm saying? And then and it's not just a demon, you know what I'm saying? Because it's 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 homosexuals who have gotten saved. You know what I'm saying? But they still struggle with those same sex attractions, right? So check this out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm finna speak. I'm finna speak on it. You know what I'm saying? So a homosexual could get saved, could get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? But they could still have them same sex attractions. But the thing is, you can't give yourself over to that lifestyle. You can't give yourself over to that behavior. Because, because see, some, see, because some people think that, okay, if I'm gay and I get saved, I'm not going to have same-sex attractions no more. I'm not saying all that. Now, I know God can do it, and then I learned something. You know what I'm saying? You got to let God do whatever he want to do the way he want to do it. Because I, that's like this week, right? Check this out. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, I don't forget to go back to what I was saying, but... You know what I'm saying? We're going to bring this thing out right here. You know what I'm saying? Why not? You know what I'm saying? But say, check this out, right? So last week or earlier this week, you know what I'm saying? I had trouble I had trouble with my wisdom tooth, right? So my tooth was a wisdom tooth, and then it got all swollen, and it was pain like it was painting something serious. Now check this out. I'm praying like I believe in healing. You know what I'm saying? I know God can touch that thing and heal that thing and take that thing away supernaturally, miraculously. I know God can do that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm praying, but it didn't happen like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, God, if you don't want to do it supernaturally, then God, do it naturally. You know what I'm saying? Help connect me with the right doctor. You know what I'm saying? I got on the internet, get to looking around, you know, send me to the right dentist. Help me to get this thing pulled out the right way uh, 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 with no complications and for the right price. And God was already in it just because of the time and I, I had the money to pay for what I needed. God blessed me, get that thing done, uh, get it done right. Because cause see, people done died for less. People done went to the doctor for something less than getting the tooth pulled and something go wrong and you can die. You know what I'm saying? So just because you're, you're getting something done by natural means, you still need to pray. You still need to ask God to lead you, but you can't put God in a box. If I try to put God in a box and say, I'm believing God to heal my tooth. I'm not going to go to the doctor. You know, something bad could have happened to me, and, and, and that pain wouldn't let me. 
I had to go do something. I I ended up having to go to the emergency room on, on Monday, which was Labor Day. So they gave me some medicine. And then I had to get that thing pulled on Tuesday. But what I'm saying is you can't put God in a box. You can't make God do it one way if, if he got it in his mind to do it another way. It's not about God getting it's not about getting God to do what you want him to do. It's about finding out the way God wants to do it and then getting in partnership with God to do what he want to do the way he want to do it. That's just like David and them when they went to war. They didn't they didn't use the same strategy every time. You know, God might just tell them to just go out and, and praise me. And then and then I'm going to deal with the enemy. And then another time he told David, wait, 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 wait till you see the rustling in the leaves on the mulberry tree. And then another time he might tell them to set an ambush like they did in Ai in Joshua. And then, but at Jericho, he told them to go around the city. See, when God want to do something, you can't make God do it a certain kind of way. You got to find out the way that God want to do it. And then you get in partnership with God. The Bible say we're, we're workers together with Christ. See, you don't run God. God do what he want to do, but God is a loving God. So he wants the best for us. I knew it was his will for me to be healed of whatever was going on in my tooth. But I gave God room. If you want to do it supernaturally, that's cool with me. But if you want me to uh if you want me to use the doctor, then that's cool too. Just lead me in the right place. And while they doing that surgery, I pray for the doctor that you guide his hands. God is mine. So that this thing comes out successful. Joan, Joan Rivers. Didn't she go to the doctor for something minor and die? Oh, yeah. Okay, but what I'm saying, though, a homosexual, if they get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, God could deliver them to the point where they no longer have same-sex attractions at all. Like, it's over with. It's done. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? I done looked at some testimonies. You know what I'm saying? I done looked at some testimonies and things like some real genuine Christians. You know what I'm saying? Who was homosexuals. And some of them say they still had same-sex attractions. You know what I'm saying? Some of them said they, 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 that was still a struggle. That was still a struggle. But the thing is, and if you're a homosexual and you get saved... You may still struggle with same-sex attraction. It just depends on how God touch you. Because God could touch you to where you no longer struggle with that. That's not even a temptation no more. Or, or he can give you the strength and give you the grace to turn away from those kind of relationships and that kind of homosexual activity and those kind of relationships. You know what I'm saying? He could give you the grace and set you free from that, but you might still have those type of attractions. And but but God give you the grace to turn away from that lifestyle. And then he give you wisdom to not put yourself in situations where you're gonna fall into that type of activity. And he'll deliver you from that kind of, he'll give you the grace and the strength to fight them kind of thoughts and those kind of uh, attractions to fight them by his spirit. And check this out. Here's a great example. That's just like if you straight, if you are straight, say you're a straight man, okay? Now, before you got saved, you was living a life of lust and fornication. <laughs> Watch this. So you get married. You committed to one woman, right? <laughs> now check this out. That doesn't mean that you don't have attractions to other women. That don't mean that just because you got married 
every other woman is no longer, you know what I'm saying? You might get married, but other women are still, there's other women that are still attractive. You know what I'm saying? There's other women that are still attractive, but you don't pursue, you don't act on those attractions. That's what it means to be dead to the flesh. Because I, I can still be attracted to other women, but I know that's not the Holy Ghost trying to draw me to those other women. So you can still have attraction to other women. Other women can still be fine or whatever, pretty, whatever. But if you are walking with God and you in the spirit, you're not pursuing none of those other attractions in your flesh. You might have attraction to other women, but that's what it means to be dead to the flesh. You don't allow the flesh to have his way. You don't pursue those attractions in the flesh. And by the wisdom of God, you keep yourself out of compromising situations where you might fall weak or where you might fall victim to the flesh. Because he said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So it's the same thing for a homosexual. If a homosexual gets saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost, you might still have same-sex attraction if God don't take it away from you. But even if he don't take it away from you, he give you the strength and the power to turn from that lifestyle, to turn from that type of activity. And even if you still have homosexual attractions, God will give you the strength and the wisdom to fight that within yourself by his spirit. Because that attraction come from the flesh. It come from the sin nature. That's not the spirit of God. That's not the Holy Ghost trying to lead you into that homosexual activity. So God will help you to fight that and to conquer that and to subdue those desires. And when you get saved, you no longer pursue after those attractions. You keep yourselves out of situations that's going to stir up those kind of desires. You keep yourself out of situations where that, that, that could cause you to fall weak to those type of desires. That's why preachers don't need to be counseling with no other woman one-on-one -on -one without their wife. Yeah, you might be saved, you might be married, but if you put yourself in a situation, you're still human. Yeah, see, you can put yourself in a situation where you fall victim to your fleshly desires. You might be married, you might love your wife, you might be a man of God, but you get to hanging around with some woman that's not your wife, especially she attractive. You get to hanging around with her, spending too much time with her. Y'all got a little connection, see? Now you done put yourself in a situation where you can fall weak to your fleshly desires. It's the same thing. Yeah, well, when it, when it come to God and it come to deliverance and it come to holiness, it's not that much difference. You know what I'm saying? What, 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 whatever you were in, you got to turn away from it. See, see, people don't want to preach that. Either they don't want to talk about homosexuality, they don't want to talk about it like it's a sin, but that lifestyle, that homosexual activity, that homosexual lifestyle, it is a sin. Yeah, it is something that you got to come out of. But I don't believe in singling out. Because homosexuality, it's just a hot topic. But it's almost, they done almost made it next door to racism. So, see, people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to preach against it. They don't want to talk about it because it stirs up controversy. And some people, they want to please everybody, so they don't want to mention it. And then some people who talk about it, they just bash them without really trying to bring them to the cross without really talking deliverance with them. They just kind of bash them and try to run them out the church. And me, I get my example from Jesus. I don't get my example from these worldly, watered-down preachers. 
I don't get my example from, from these so-called holiness preachers, but I don't see the love of God. I don't always see the love of God in them. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't get my example off of them neither. I get my example. I get my example from Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I get my example from the Holy Ghost. I get my example from the Holy Ghost. You got to preach the truth, but you got to do it in love. I believe Jesus told the truth. I don't believe Jesus sugarcoated it. I don't believe Jesus tiptoed around the subject, but I believe he dealt with people in love. That, 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 that's what it takes in these last days. You got to have the real love of God, but you got to have the real Holy Ghost to really preach the truth. Because lies, telling, telling you lies, or not talking about certain stuff, that ain't going to get nobody delivered. I'm trying to get somebody delivered. I can handle the persecution. I, I was hard. I was hard when I was in the world. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> hey, I was hard when I was in the world. You think I'm going to get in Christ and get in holiness and soften up? Be scared of persecution? I used to get jumped and, and get beat up when I was in the world. You think I'm finna get scared now? But I was a shooter too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was a shooter too. You know what I'm saying? And don't think I lost them all. I didn't win them all, but I ain't lose them all neither. You know what I'm saying? But I, I was I was known. Well, I, I, I ain't finna get into that. <laughs> hey, you got to tell people the truth though, but you got to do it in love. But like I said, people talking Jesus, man. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't going to live a life, people living in fornication. You know what I'm saying? People not married. The world say it's okay. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about God. When if, if you decide you want to live for God, that's one of the things you got to deal with. You can't just live in fornication and talk like I'm, I'm a child of God. You talking that. But if, if God see you in the judgment, that's not going to fly. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to preach holiness because holiness is the way. It's not, holiness is not a type of church. I mean, it is a type of church, but any Christian, any Christian is called to live holy. Holy is part of salvation. And, and, and that's the thing. That, that, that's what's missing. That's what's missing in the church. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to preach holiness. Whatever is not of God, you ought to be seeking God to help bring you out of it. Smoking, drinking, cussing, none of that stuff is godly. And the thing about drinking, I'm going to tell you the truth. The Bible does not expressly, the Bible does not condemn drinking. The Bible condemns drunkenness. But check it out. You know what I'm saying? I believe in holiness. You know what I'm saying? I want to be an example. So I don't drink because drinking represented the old life. Drinking represented my old life. And it never helped me. Drinking never brought me closer to God. If you drink, I look at it like you playing on the edge. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 if you drink, you playing on the edge. Just because you drink, that don't mean you're going to get drunk. You know what I'm saying? But the more you drink, is it going to make you more like Christ? No. The more you drink, you getting closer and closer to drunkenness. And when you're in a state of drunkenness, you don't care about God. That's why the Bible commands us to be sober. Be sober. You know what I'm saying? So you and then you look at what does alcohol lead to? That's just like gambling. The Bible doesn't uh, uh, condemn gambling, but what is gambling? It's worldliness. What kind of environment are you putting yourself into? And then, and then what can gambling lead to? It don't always lead to this, but it can lead to somebody with no discipline in, and they got bills and they gambling away, you know what I'm saying? Money that they supposed to be taking care of responsibilities with. See, a lot of things, what I call black and white sins, some things the Bible expressly condemns. Those are black and white sins. Some stuff is gray areas. The Bible don't really say nothing about it. Even smoking. 
That's not a black and white sin. But you got to have Holy Ghost common sense. When you smoke, you're hurting your body. You're doing damage to your body. But the Bible say your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Then he said, whoever destroyed the temple, God going to destroy them. First Corinthians chapter <laughs> Hey, First Corinthians chapter 3, man. Don't nobody want to preach holiness? But, but hey, total commitment to God. How you going to be totally committed to God and you holding on to your cigarettes? Now, smoking is not the biggest sin in the world. But if you won't put that down, I don't think you totally committed to God. And it ain't my judgment that matters. It's God's judgment. And people say, well, he judging everybody, sure. All I'm doing is getting you ready for the test. That's just like if you got a teacher and they telling you everything that's going to be on the test. You getting mad at the teacher and they, and this and that, this and that. But they telling you what's going to be on the test. So you can prepare yourself and when the test come, you can do well. All I'm doing is preparing you for what's going to be on the judgment. So you can get mad at me and all this and that, but 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 you can get mad at me and all this and that, but the same stuff you don't want to get right now is going to come up in the judgment. Because I'm not the one that's judging you. I can't put you in heaven or hell, but I know what that word say. You know what I'm saying? I know what that word say. I know what God has called us to. I know that God has called us to a total commitment. You know what I'm saying? I know that God has called us to fear him, which means reverence and respect to the point of obedience. I know he wants us to work righteousness, and I know we got to believe on Jesus because he is the way maker. He is the way. He the one that made the way. I know you can't get to the Father without going through the Son. I know he's the only one that lived a sinless life, qualified him to be our sin offering, our atonement. But I know you can't say you believe in him and you won't obey the word. I know you got to live it. I know you got to live holy. I know you got to do the will of God. You can't just have an empty faith, a dead faith, and say, I love Jesus. And I believe in Jesus, but you're not living the life that Jesus told you to live. I, I know that ain't going to fly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, everything that's going to be on the judgment is in this word. This book is a study manual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what we're going to be judged on. Did we live the life he called us to live? That word, it gives you a revelation of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, he said he revealed himself to Samuel by the word. Let me get that. I was going to read that scripture out of Revelation. I ain't even get to it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, man. You know what I'm saying? It says the Lord revealed himself to Samuel by the word. This same word is how God reveals himself to us. You know what I'm saying? He give you the Holy Ghost if you know you need it and you want it and you ask God for the Holy Ghost, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will take this word when you take time to get in the word. The Holy Ghost will open up this word and reveal the heart and the mind and the character of God to you. I don't even have to read the scripture, but I'm going to read it. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. He revealed himself by his word. I ain't never seen Jesus in a... I ain't never seen Jesus. But I know him by this word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt the presence of God. I've never seen him. No, he said, blessed are those who haven't seen and yet do believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your faith got to kick in somewhere. He said, oh, faithless and adulterous generation. But, you know, God, God loves us, man. He sent Jesus to die for us. You know what I'm saying? If we... 
commit ourselves to God, if we believe on Jesus, make a commitment to live for him and ask God to help us to live for him, he'll do it. Any man who come to Jesus, he won't cast you out. It don't matter what you're struggling with. It don't matter what you bound by. You might be so deep in the clutches of sin, you don't see no way out. You say it's always been like this. It's going to always be like this. That's how you feel, but that's not the truth. That's deception. The devil wants you to think he's the most powerful thing in the universe, but he's not. There's one power that's greater than him, and that's the name of Jesus. Yeah, it, it don't matter what you trapped in. It don't matter what you bound by. It could be a heroin. It could be a heroin addiction. You feel like, man, I can't break this thing. You got to call on Jesus. If you believe on him, you can call on him. But when you call on him, you need to be ready to live for him. You need to be ready to make a total commitment of your life to him. But when you do that, He'll give you the Holy Ghost. Just say, God, I need everything. I need everything that it takes for me to live for you. You got you to gotta want to live for God. You got to be ready to turn from your sin and make a total commitment to God. You got to be ready to make a total commitment to God. And then you got to ask God to help you. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your power. God, help me to live this life. You got to stay in the face of God asking him to help you to live this life, to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You got to get inside the word. Strength comes from prayer. Strength comes from reading the word of God, even if you're not understanding a lot of it. Just keep reading it because in the mind of God, that counts as spending time with God. And then, and then some of that stuff you might not understand the first go round, but then you read it again, and now some more stuff uh, uh, you you get enlightened on it. That, that's how the Bible is. You ain't gonna understand everything on one go round, but the more you read it, the more you gonna understand. Yeah, some stuff you going you might some stuff is clear. And you understand exactly what it is. But the more you read, the more the Holy Ghost will open up to you. Matter of fact, when Jesus was walking with the disciples after his resurrection, it said Jesus opened up their understanding so they could understand the scriptures. David said, Psalm 119, he said, Lord, open up my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. See, God will help us to understand that Bible. Somebody who's been reading that Bible 20 years, you can be reading some one day and the Holy Ghost shine light on it and give you a revelation that you ain't had up until that time. The, the Holy Ghost is our helper. You need them with you. Don't get caught up in all these denominations and all these different branches of Christianity. You know what I'm saying? The main thing you got to know is, God, you got to believe in Jesus that he died for your sins. He rose from the dead. He's the son of God. He is God himself. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. You got to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. You know what I'm saying? And you got to live holy. You got to live the life that God called us to live. It's a life of love. You got to love God with all your heart. You got to love all people and you got to live holy. Anything that you know is not right, you got to be willing to turn away from it. And some things it's easier to turn away from others. Some things it's easy to put down. Some things it's not so easy. But you got to ask God for help. You got to go after God with your whole heart. And you got to commit yourself to living holy and loving like Jesus. And everything, you're not going to perfect everything overnight. You got to be in it for the long haul. Anybody can serve God for a specific amount of time and then turn back. But you got to commit yourself to God and you got to stay committed. And you got to grow in God. And you got to go on with God. It's a relationship. 
It's a relationship. God will hold your hand. He'll walk you through trials and tribulations and hard times and difficulties. <laughs> hey, he'll walk you through it. And it ain't all bad. You're going to have some good times in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? He'll connect you with some real people who really love you instead of all them fake friends, people that want to use you and all that kind of stuff. God will connect you with people that love you. And you got to turn your back. You got to turn away from the wrong people. Some of them folks, you got to let them go. It's hard to live holy when you surround yourself with unholy people. How you going to live it? See, the thing about Jesus, Jesus didn't go out of his way to hang around sinners. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, I come to call sinners, watch this, to repentance. He didn't say, I, I came to hang out with sinners who want to continue in sin. Jesus was going after those because he knew they was ready for a change. And then if you notice it wasn't Jesus following them. They were always following him. Jesus said, I got to be about my father's business. Jesus was always doing the work of God. And whether they were sinners or whether they was disciples, whether they was people that, that were living for Jesus, people who committed themselves to him, or whether it was sinners, they was always following him. Jesus wasn't following them. They was following him. And he was always doing the work of God. See, it's a difference when, when, when your friends are following you or you following them. See, it's a difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a difference. Because when you're really living for God and you're really living that life of holiness, sinners ain't going to be drawn to you unless they ready, unless they interested in God. Now, Jesus was doing miracles that blessed everybody, whether they were saved or not. You know what I'm saying? So that's what drew some of the people to him. And he said it. He said, y'all following me because of the miracle with the fishes and the loaves. Y'all trying to benefit and not just spiritually benefit, but benefit your flesh. Your stomach, you think I'm going to feed you. That, that's, like some, that's like me if I do a miracle and a whole bunch of, uh, uh, and I, <laughs> hey, that's like if I do a miracle and I turn $5 into $500,000. Hey, I'm going to have some folks following me. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it ain't going to be because they want to know God. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Jesus turned a few loaves and fed a multitude. That's just like me turning $5 into $500,000. i am going to have some folks following me, and all of them is not going to be interested in getting saved and committing their life to God. So that's similar to what Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he did a miracle dealing with physical things, and a lot of folks were following him. But as soon as he started talking about really committing yourself to God, he said, drink my blood and eat my flesh. All he really saying is believe on me and commit your life to me. That's all he really saying. But then after he got done talking, them folk turned around and walked off. They weren't interested in God. They was trying to benefit. Yeah, they was trying to benefit, man. John chapter 7, man. Listen, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's real, though, man. You know what I'm saying? But, hey. Them folks were following Jesus. And if Jesus went out of his way to deal with a sinner, it was with somebody who was ready to repent. He wasn't just hanging around sinners while they living in sin and committing sin and just hanging around trying to fit in. Nah, Jesus wasn't about none of that. Jesus was a leader. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and his whole purpose was to deal with sinners but to bring them out their sin. Not to give you the okay to continue in sin. He was a merciful God. The woman caught in adultery. The woman caught in adultery, what he tell her? He said, I I'm not here to condemn you, but go your way and sin no more. John chapter 8. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say it's okay to sin. Oh, I forgive you. It's okay now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, he's saying, you lucky you alive. Because they was going to kill you. But I'm showing you the mercy of God. 
I'm showing you the mercy of God. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm giving my life up so you can be forgiven. But he's saying, don't take my kindness for weakness. Go your way. Receive my mercy, but sin no more. That's what Jesus is saying. We're in an age of mercy right now. We're in an age of grace right now. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. That's not what his will is. That's not what his purpose is. If he came to condemn us, you know what I'm saying, we'd all be dropping like flies. But he said, that's not my purpose. My purpose was to save. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but we have to consent. We have to commit. We have to commit our lives to him. We got to live it with his help. But when he come back the second time, when he come back the second time, it's going to be for judgment. It's going to be to receive the people that have made themselves ready. He's coming back for a prepared people, a church that's washed, sanctified. He's coming back for people that have made themselves pure. He's coming back for a prepared people. And if you're not in that group that's prepared themselves for Jesus, you're going to be judged and it's going to be too late to repent. It's going to be a separation from those that's his. It's going to be a separation of those that's not his from those that's his. You know what I'm saying? When this, and it's the same thing when a person die. You got to have it right when you die. As long as you alive, you got a chance to get it right with God. As long as you alive, you got a chance to get it right with God. But once this life is over with, wherever you stood with God, that's where you're going to be. If you wasn't right with God, you facing hell, you got hell to pay. And if you was right with God, you handled your business with Jesus, you believed on him, you made it right with him, or you was living for him, he going to receive you to himself. Ain't nobody finna tell you no lie. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't nobody finna tell you no lie. You know what I'm saying? But it don't matter what kind of sin you're in. You know what I'm saying? Jesus is the way of escape. He's the way to overcome. He's the way to conquer it. He's the way to overcome it. He's the way to subdue it. It might feel right, but if the word of God says it's not right, it's not right. And you got to get it right if you want to be on acceptable terms with Jesus. If you want to be on acceptable terms with Jesus, he can make it right. But you got to come to him. You got to ask him to forgive you. You got to admit that I've, I've done wrong. I've sinned. God, forgive me. Jesus, I need you to help me. God, save me. Wash me in your blood. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost so I can live for you. Give me everything I need so I can live for you. You'll have an encounter with God. If you come to God with a sincere heart, you'll have an encounter with God. God knows you got to have a real encounter with him to live it these days. God knows that you can't really live for him if you ain't had no real encounter with him. The, the, the pull of the world is too strong. The demons in the atmosphere are too strong. The demons that's attaching themselves to people and, and taking hold of people and binding people's minds and the demons that's coming inside people and just the pull of the world the force and the allurement and the attraction and the pull and the tug of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of uh, uh, the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of the world and responsibilities and Everything that's fighting for your affection so you can't zero in and focus on Jesus. You 
You got to take time. You got to steal yourself. The Bible say, be still and know that I'm God, not me. <laughs> be still and know that God is God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the presidential election. I'm just at the point now, like, if if it happens, I still say that. Because I still think we could be blindsided. I don't know. I don't have no word from the Lord. But just out of my own heart, you know, you know how you be focused on one thing and then something else come from the side. Boom! You know what I'm saying? So you never know. You know what I'm saying? If the election happens... It's it's just going to be what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't support sin. You know what I'm saying? I if I vote, I'll vote for Trump. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if they say he's racist. He ain't got to be my friend no way. You know what I'm saying? I don't <laughs> I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? But when I look at the issues that he stand for and the issues that she stand for, and when I look at what she support and I look at what he support, I would vote for Trump. That's just me. I'm I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I don't I don't pledge allegiance to Nan one of them sides. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that type of person. <laughs> I don't ride for them like that. <laughs> I don't I don't ride for Nan one of them like that. I pray for both of them. Whoever win, I'm gonna be praying for them. I'm going to pray for the person to win that God would have to win. Another thing about the Democrats, though, they want to take your guns. You know what I'm saying? I still got my nine, <laughs> but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't depend on guns for protection. I'm not a hunter. I don't do that. Uh, I don't ride around with it or nothing like that no more. You know what I'm saying? But I still got the Nina. You know what I'm saying? But it, just in case I was to ever, you know what I'm saying, need it. You know what I'm saying? But I believe it. I believe we should have the right. You know what I'm saying? Democrats really want to take your guns. You know what I'm saying? They, I, I could never, I, I couldn't ride for no Democrat. Not, not, not lately. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, if you know what they, <laughs> if you know what they stand for, you know what I'm saying? They say Republicans do all the taxing and all that. Man, I trust God. You know what I'm saying? I trust God. I, I ain't worried about the government providing for me. The IRS might be coming after my head. They done tried to, the IRS say they gonna sue me. You know what I'm saying? I pray to God it don't turn out to be nothing. I know I ain't the only one who owed them some money and didn't pay. <laughs> I, I know I ain't the only one. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know what I'm saying? I put that in God's hand. I called them. I tried to work out a payment plan. They said the line was so busy, you just going to have to call back at another time. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I'm joking. I'm joking and stuff now, but they, they really did say they were going to come after me. But I put that in God's hands, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about the president. The president ain't going to do nothing for my money. No way. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... You know what I'm saying? I'm trusting God. Regardless of who wins, it's not going to make me. It's not going to break me. It's not going to shake me. You know what I'm saying? I'm trusting God. The Holy Ghost. Jesus is my president. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to live for him. Whether it's easy, whether it's hard, whether they say it's right, whether they say it's wrong, whether a lot of people agree with it, whether a lot of people don't, whether it's a lot of people on the path, but it's just a few on that path because it's a straight gate and it's a narrow way. Listen. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus loves us. He gave his life. God sent his son because he loves us. And right now, it's not a time of judgment. Right now is a time of grace. It's a time to be forgiven for your sins. It's a time to turn out of your sin. It's a time to turn from your wicked ways. I don't care if you was born in it. I don't feel like if you felt like you got taken hostage by it. I don't care what was done to you as a child. God is the answer. He'll heal you on the inside. He'll heal your soul. He'll give you power to come out of sin and live holy. He'll help you. You need his help. You can't do it on yourself. He'll pull you out of drugs. He don't care if you came up in poverty. You came up around thugs and killers. He'll deliver you. He'll give you a new state of mind. He'll change you on the inside. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See, a lot of people was brought up. A lot of people was brought up in these ways. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people was brought up in sin. They was brought up in sinful environments. A lot of people had sin and perversion in the household. You know what I'm saying? And that stuff jumped on them. That The, the, the devil took advantage of a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? The, the, but that's what he do. He the devil. He don't play fair. He don't play fair. He trying to he, he trying to get a hold of you while you're young. And when you're old, he don't want to let you go. But God is real. If you can call on God with a sincere heart, God will give you an encounter. God will give you an experience with him so you won't have to live your life in doubt. Is this thing real? Is this for real, God? Are you real? Man, God, if you call on God with a sincere heart, he'll give you an encounter. He'll give you an experience. He'll give you a revelation. You don't have to spend your life in doubt. You can have firm faith in the Lord. And you know how it is when people first get saved. Boy, God will manifest himself to you in some real ways when you first get saved. When you in that baby stage, he'll, he'll, he'll show himself real. But you got to be willing to give him your whole life. That, that's, what, that's what stirs me up the most. That's what stirs me up the most when I'm preaching, when I'm telling people about God. You got to give them your whole life. All that other stuff, you playing with yourself. You're deceiving yourself. That's why Paul talked about it in 1 Corinthians 6. He said, don't be deceived. And then James said, uh, don't deceive yourself. Not the hearers of the word, but the doers. Yeah, it's... it's Ain't no, a lot, a lot of people deceiving themselves. See, nowadays we got a lot of people that's cold. The Bible said be hot or cold. See, nowadays we got a lot of people that's cold. They just don't believe in God. They don't want nothing to do with God. Man, get that mess out of my face. Hey, it is what it is if that's your choice. If that's, it is what it is. But, but what stirs me up even more, what bothers me, you know what I'm saying? What bothers me is, is when people talk in God, but they not living this thing. They, they talk in God. They, they, they want to talk about the Bible. They want to go over scriptures or they want to be in church or be in ministry. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to talk God when a conversation is brought up. But then in reality, when you check their life, when you check the secret chambers of their heart and the secret chambers of their life, they not really totally committed to this thing. They just got their feet in the water. They don't want to dive into the deep end. They just want to test the waters. They want to be around Christian culture. They... They, 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 they want to have a form of godliness and they want to be familiar with the things of God and, and talk like they got a familiarity with Christian culture. But when you look at their life, they living in sin and they not trying to be delivered. They're not in a struggle. A struggle is when you at least fighting against it. You know what I'm saying? A struggle is when you're in a fight. A lot of folks, they not in a fight. They just in sin. They've given themselves over to it. That ain't no struggle. That's like me when I was in the world. Uh, I wasn't struggling with lust. I wasn't struggling with fornication because I had given myself over to it. I knew what I was doing when I'm going to the club, when I'm on the dance floor, full of them drinks, trying to ease up on a female. 
I wasn't struggling. I had given myself over to that lifestyle. Yeah, that wasn't no struggle. But as soon as I made a commitment back to God, oh, that stuff was a wrap. Yeah. Because I already had the Holy Ghost. I just had to recommit myself to God and redevelop my prayer life, redevelop my personal relationship with God. Yeah, wasn't none of that no struggle when I recommitted to God. Lust as far as different women and, and that life I would live in, that, that street life and that nightlife and that club life, wasn't none of that stuff no struggle. You know what I'm saying? Me and my wife, we struggled from the time we recommitted back to God to the time we was actually able to get married. Now, now that was a little bit of a struggle because you, you know when you're struggling because you do something, because you, you, you do something, but then you feel bad about it and you want to pray, God, forgive me. God, help me to be more disciplined. Uh, God, help me to be more patient. You, you know when you're struggling with your temper, when you, you start going off on somebody, but then you feel bad after it's over with God. Help me to be more patient next time. You know what I'm saying? That's a struggle. But a lot of folks is in sin, and it's not a struggle. They've given themselves over to it. That's not a struggle. <laughs> that ain't no struggle. You know what I'm talking about? That's just willful sin. And that'll get you in trouble. If you die in your sin, you're in trouble. But I thank God that he don't kill us for being in sin. But he can allow you. The devil is the one who do all the killing. But all it takes is for God to take his hand off you. That's what kept me. When I was in sin, God was still protecting me. He wouldn't let the devil have me. He said, Simon Peter, Satan have desired to sift you like wheat. Yeah, he says, Satan have desired to have you. He want to sift you like wheat. He said, but I've prayed for you. That your faith fail not. Yeah. And he said, after you've been converted, strengthen your brethren. Yeah, it's, it's real, man. It's real in the field, man. You know what I'm saying? But we got to come out of sin, man. Because all that stuff is deception. All, and then, then they, 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 they preaching grace with a false balance. Everything is balanced. Yeah, we saved by faith. Yeah, it's grace through faith, but it's balanced. You still got to live a life. Real grace will produce obedience. Grace and obedience is not opposite. Grace and works are not opposite. Now, salvation is by grace. But if you got grace, it's going to produce works. It's going to produce a lifestyle. It's going to produce obedience. The Bible talks about the obedience of faith. Then Paul said, uh, he said, bringing every thought into captivity, watch this, unto the obedience of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ produces obedience. <laughs> Look at the example Jesus said. He, 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 he was the one who introduced grace and truth. And what else? Obedience. Yeah, if you got Christ, Christ going to make you walk in obedience. If you got grace, grace is going to empower you and enable you to walk in obedience. You can't separate grace and holiness, grace and faith, faith and holiness. You can't separate none of that because it all go together. Yeah, 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 man. People, people want to have God or talk like they know him, but they don't want to live it. That's what stirs me up more than anything. More than that person who don't believe in God and got everything to say about the Bible not being real and God not being real. I'm just like, okay, you don't know him. So 
know what I'm saying? You feel like that because you don't know him. That's just like me. If I know somebody, you can try to say they not real. That's because you don't know them. Now, they don't really exist. That's because you don't know them. That really don't bother me. I just pray for that person. But what bothers me in my spirit is when that person talking like they know God and like they familiar with the things of God and like they familiar with the word of God and they been around Christian culture and still want to talk like they his, like they saved, but they living in sin. That bothers me. That person ought to just say, hey, I'm backslid. Yeah, yeah, I used to be in church. Yeah, I used to be in ministry. Hey, I'm backslid right now, though. That wouldn't bother me. <laughs> but when they be talking like they still say, well, I, I'm in church and I went to church and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, I grew up in church, but you living in sin. What does church have to do with it? Well, my, my parents were pastors and what that got to do with you living in sin? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not saved. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's what bothers me. And it's not just like that specific person. It's that mentality. It's not the person. It's not people who think like that. It's not the actual people that bother me. It's that mentality. That people are being led to think. They've been trained and manipulated to think that even though they living in sin, they're still acceptable to God while they're in their sin without any true repentance, without any deliverance. You got to come out your sin. Your sincerity has to be manifested. You got something got to happen in your heart where you say, I can't live like this. God, I want you. I can't do it this way. I got to do it your way, God. You got to have an internal conviction, an internal revelation. Say, nah, I can't keep living like this, God. I want to be, I want to live for you. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to save me, God. I repent. I turn away from that, God. Help me to live for you. Something got to happen on the inside. We can't just live in sin and just because we've had some experience in Christian culture think that we're acceptable to God when we haven't made a real commitment to him. We haven't really repented. We haven't really gave our lives to God. That is what bothers me. It hurts me. It stirs me up. That mentality, that have it your way gospel, that live the way you want to live. Be your own God, but then you can get his heaven. That's what bothers me. You can't be your own God and then think you're going to go to his holy heaven. I'm talking holiness. I'm talking total commitment to God. I'm talking a total turn away from things that don't edify, that don't build you up in your walk with God. Yeah, smoking and drinking, all that, that's for the world. That's for the people that are not God's people. But if you want to be God's people, if you want to be God's person, you got to love what God loves, which is holiness, which is righteousness, which is people. And you got to love yourself. Really, smoking, all it is is slow death. You killing yourself. You killing yourself. You're harming yourself, but we get pleasure out of it. That's how you know it's the sin nature. When you hurt yourself, but you get pleasure out of it. Like them people that cut they sell. They cut they sell, but it brings them some kind of pleasure, and then they get addicted to it. That's the sin nature. The people of God, it's our job to overcome the sin nature and to live by the Spirit of God. Walk in the spirit that we gratify not the lust of the flesh, that we fulfill not the lust of the flesh. Jesus, I'm going to end it right there.